Good to know you're still with us. You're watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. As usual, we have very important conversation here and to help us make sense of it, we have two guests. But first, it's about the FG and ASU uh, face-off. The strike seems to linger on, on ending. Uh, the workers are adamant. The federal government has postponed the meeting over and over again. Yesterday, there was a further postponement. This time, we don't know when the next meeting is going to be convened. What is the fate of Nigerian students? It's almost a year. They've been at home. What is happening with our education system and where do we go? How is this going to impact on our future? We have helping to um, you know, unravel this two gentlemen. I have um, joining us a Dr. Adelaja Odukoya, the former ASU chairman from Unilag. Uh, we also have joining us uh, Professor Yomi Fawami. He's an education consultant. Uh, thank you, gentlemen, for joining us on The Breakfast. Uh, thank you and good morning. Uh, good morning. Thank you. Good morning. Yeah. All right. Um, I guess we will start with you, um, uh, Professor Farami. What is your take? Or rather, let's start with um, uh, the former ASU chairman, uh, Dr. Dukoya. So could you give us an idea where we are at with these negotiations? Is there a light at the end of the tunnel? Yeah, thank you very much and good morning once again. Uh, uh, let me t say that for us in ASU, uh, going on strike, like we have always expressed, is the, is the last option for us. And this is so because as intellectual, uh, our work, we know how important it is for society. But again, as gatekeepers, we are equally to ensure that the quality of education and knowledge is, uh, that we give to our students, give to our students, uh, is comparable because the competitors for students within the context of globalization are not just their immediate distance, they compete with everybody uh, across the globe. So we are ready, we are willing, we are available to go to work, uh, but it is obvious, and Nigerians are, uh, are witness to that, that the federal government, uh, permit me to say, with all sense of responsibility, have not been so sincere with the negotiation. Promises have been made, uh, but have not been kept. And that's why we are still at home. Doctor, I um, um, you, uh, you, 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 the, the part of the question that I asked you is, do you see a light at the end of the tunnel? Because uh, yes, from where we are sitting, there doesn't seem to be any. No, what I'm saying is that, uh, there's light. Uh, uh, it all depends on the government. We are ready and willing. For example, the, uh, the meeting that was postponed was not at our instance. More often than not, meetings are postponed at the instance of the federal government. The federal government is making proposals, uh, making promises, it's not fulfilling. That's why I said, with all sense of responsibility, there has not been much sincerity on the part of the government. So, let the government do the needful. And we are ready. So, that's the light for us. Right. We are ready to go to work. We are willing to go to work. We have nothing to do except to teach our students and go back to classes. Let the government do the needful and we'll be there. That's the All point right, I'm uh, trying to make. Um, well, let's right. quickly uh, uh, apologize for the graphics uh, on there. He is the former ASU chairman, Unilag, but the graphic is saying um, he is um, oh, ASU sorry. chairman. Just a quick right. note. I want to move to Professor Yomi Fawaimi now. Um, I'm sure that you've also been following these issues. Um, I, I want your thoughts on the demands that ASU has been making over time. Uh, the, the strike has gone on for months and months and months. Uh, a lot of Nigerians are already uh, tired. Um, but I, I want your thoughts on how logical these demands are. Um, the government, of course, in the 2009 agreement had made promises. We're more than 10 years you know, after that agreement was signed. Uh, not a lot was done or has changed. Um, do you think the federal government might be different this time or might, you know, take action this time, um, seeing that ASU doesn't seem, you know, to want to renege on, of course, on the strike? 
Okay, uh, thanks. Thanks for asking me. I mean, very interesting question you asked. Um, I, it's, it's, I think it's been unfortunate that uh, we have had agreement signed with, and this is not just us, with various uh, labor unions, whether it's the medical workers or uh, senior academic staff or universities of research, as the case may be. And we have signed many agreements with them that the state has not honored. And unfortunately, we have allowed that to remain uh, for too long. Um, it's, it's an unfortunate situation we have found ourselves. However, it's also unfortunate that um, the way to handle lead at all also not being uh, what is in the interest of the universal system. Um, from 1999 to date, uh, the cumulative count of the number of months that ASU had gone on strike, it's 50, 50 months uh, based on my last count, and that's effectively 20% of the total period between 1999 when we went to democracy to now. And so any system that can be shut down 20% of this time from 1999 to 2020 already shows some level of inefficiency. Uh, inefficiency triggered by the fact that government signs agreement it doesn't live by, but also inefficiency triggered by how uh, the stakeholders undo the uh, government lack of capacity or lack of interest or lack of commitment to follow the agreement. Uh, what has happened consistently is that it has become almost like a tension between the unions and the uh, and governments. But education is a system. I mean, we are all stakeholders there. Some of us have children in the system. Some of us are consultants to the process. Some of us are suppliers there. What has happened in Nigerian university system is that it has become like a, a ding dong between uh, the staff and the university, uh, which 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 does not may not be fair to the rest of the stakeholders, particularly if you think about the students. But at the end of the day, the bottom line is that the federal government is signing agreement it doesn't have plans to uh, comply with and doesn't want to do the right thing at the right time. But at the end of the day, we are all the losers for it. If, if between 1999 and now, we have lost 50 months or 20% of the duration from 1999 to strike. To strike, then we are both ASU and government are not doing what is optimal for the system. 20% downtime cannot be acceptable in any efficient system in the world. All right. Um, let's come back to you, Dr. Odukoya. I, I want to, uh, there is this uh, allegation uh, that um, the reason this lingers is because the key players in the sector have their children or their wards outside the country. However, we know that those that are part of the negotiation have come out to say they are also affected because their children um, is here. Is that still a factor that's playing in the whole uh, negotiation? Or you think it goes deeper than having uh, key players in the sector's kids outside the country? Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, but quickly, before I go into that, let me uh, quickly just put it... Uh, uh, or make a, a brief comment on what Prof. has respectfully said. Uh, yes, it is highly unfortunate that uh, we've had, based on analysis, 20% downtown uh, time uh, uh, in the university system since 1999. But I need to say, and this is the truth, that but for those strikes, there won't even be a university system, Prof. and any other person or we will be talking about today. What we have uh, in, in 2012, uh, the, we forced the government to have the need assessment with, uh, exercise, and the report came out. And government itself concluded that it will need is, uh, about 1.3 trillion to actually make our university functional. Uh, uh, Dr. Dukoya, uh, we're, not, we're not arguing the legitimacy of the strike no, or the need to go on that strike. We what we're trying to look to for. It's duty to put some things in perspective. So okay. That's what I want to say. Uh -huh. okay. So I have a duty to put something in perspective. Issues should not just be raised and we let it go without actually... Uh, put it, the whole thing is to inform and educate people. But okay. I said that. You see, uh, yeah, there might be some of them that had, uh, and, uh, had their, uh, their, uh, their children in Nigerian University. But what we're, uh, beyond just having your, uh, this thing here, uh, their children here, there is no commitment to education. Uh, the way I put it is to say that the Nigerian ruling class as a patho pathological hatred for knowledge. And, and that, uh, that's, uh, uh, you see, their approach to the university edu education generally, or how they even embrace the education industry. We're in a global world. We're in a knowledge, industry, uh, in knowledge economy. If you don't promote your uh, university, your education in your country, you can't develop. 
So, all right. uh, how many of them have their children here? I can tell you for free that, for example, you will say, oh, some uh, some Asu lecturer. Yes, we have some of us too. But I can tell you for free, at my children's school in Nigeria, the Asu president have all his kids in Nigerian universities. So, the issue is that whether they have them here or not, they have not shown commitment. Uh, thankfully, to Professor have underscored that. They have not shown commitment in Nigerian education. Okay. And if uh, this is not done, this country cannot develop. Uh, let's go back to Professor Fawaimi. There, there's uh, lately been a conversation um, about the need uh, to discuss further into the possibility of privatizing federal universities. Um, do you buy into that narrative? Do you think that it's high time we maybe start to, you know, look deeper into that, uh, you know, so that, you know, it might give Nigerian universities a better lifeline and, and a better working system? Okay, I, I think one of the things we do in Nigeria is that once some A doesn't work, once white doesn't work, then we want to do black. But there's a color called gray. There is a mixture of white and black, right? So if we say, so let, let's look, how did we get to where we are? When we had the first university in Nigeria, that's the university, University of Ibadan, before independence. The next university we had owned by the federal government, of course, the University of Nigeria was started by the Eastern government. The next university we had was SS of six years after, the University of Lagos. And between 1950, uh, 1956 and to like 1970, we were counting universities on one finger. In 1970, we got this massive idea to start many universities. If you think about it, universities like University of Lawrence, University like of George, yes. were outstations of existing universities. Due to the oil boom, we decided to boom our universities and had universities all over the place. We turned campuses of universities to become full-blown universities. By the 80s, we went gaga. Today, we have 49 federal universities. The question to ask is that can the Nigerian state afford world-class 49 universities? We need to ask that question because in all of this conversation, so the idea of saying should it be privatized is not the first question. The first question is, can Nigeria, based on our current funding, can we afford world-class universities and they are going to be 49? Well, if, it's, if, 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 if from, from what we are seeing, it doesn't seem like we can afford to manage, you know, all 49 of them. What would your suggestion be? Because, you know, a lot of people would also argue that Nigeria's economy right now, with the way it seems, they may not be able to even afford these 40 billion naira revitalization and, and um, earned allowances, uh, you know, that they're, uh, they're throwing at, at ASU. So to prevent us from continuing with this, you know, same narrative, next year, maybe another strike. In 2022, another, you know, eight-month strike. I'm not sure. So should we then start talking more about the possibility of going into privatization? So, so maybe the question is not privatization. Maybe it's a question of looking for a model that takes advantage of the public nature of education and also the private nature of education. And I'm going to give you a very good example. The BBC of London, right? BBC used to be a 100% government-owned entity. It was like, like something guzzling money. And then the UK government took a decision and said, you know what, we're going to transfer this BBC to a trust. Now, the trust is in the hands of private and but the trust is not set up to make profit. So that's why I said we should not go from one extreme to the other, where we said we're going to go from government 100% ownership, then you sell everything, and then people can't afford the education any longer. No, that's not what I think we should do. What we should do is in hybrid. So we already have this asset 49 all over the place. What management system can we introduce? And the, the BBC model has worked. The US, UK government is, is happy with that decision and it's become a model for how to manage public goods. And don't forget, right. education remains a public good. And therefore, you must be able to have the balance to ensure there is access for those that cannot afford, but you also have to ensure quality so that you can get the results we want. I, I right. mean, uh, my colleague has spoken a lot about the competition for talents. I mean, people want the best at the end of the day. Okay. At the rate at which we are funding, we can't get it there. All, All right. right. Let's bring uh, Dr. Dukoya back uh, to get um, his uh, final thoughts on this. What's your reaction to the submission um, of Professor Fawemi? Yeah, I, I'm uh, in agreement to, with him to the extent that, uh, one, like you rightly said, education is a public good. And two, uh, yeah, why talking about hybrid? I would say one way or the other, why not necessarily uh, what he has suggested? 
even oh, this idea that people are not paying Nigerian University today is actually not real. What is not being paid is actually tuition. There is no Nigerian University where students are not made to pay. In, uh, by the time you had accommodation, what they spend for books and things like that, they pay over 100000 every year. That's just the truth. Uh, so the, the whole idea as if, uh, to give the impression that people are having free education in Nigeria is wrong. And talking about privatization, of course, that's what they have always wanted. And Obasanjo uh, told us way back in 20, uh, 20, uh, uh, year 2000, he will, he, will, he will create private university to run out to make sure the uh, public university and also strikes off. Yes, we've seen that. But again, as privatization actually work in Nigeria with our experience with Nepal, uh, well, with the power sector and with the monumental money we keep on pumping there. No. World Bank, again, don't forget, again, there is equally a national dimension to this. Way back in, in 2001, the World Bank made it clear that Africans and Africa does not need university education. What we need is technical education. This is equally part of the mindset. So, university education is important for national development. And we All saw right. our lapses during the COVID-19 uh, pand uh, uh, pandemic, we have to be looking outside the country for solution. Where we should rely on our university. But our university, we have rendered them the redundant. They cannot re do research. They don't have what it takes. So, we should, right. uh, because of governance, is so high. Nobody is talking about privatizing governance or reducing the cost of governance. It is our national greed that we need to manage so that we can fund education. Uh, All right, Dr. Um, Odukoya. Uh, that, that's as much time will permit us, but I will definitely, we will definitely be getting back in touch so we can continue this conversation. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you so much. Uh, Professor Fawami, thank you as well for joining us on The Breakfast. Thank you. Have a good day. All right. I, 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 I you know, really am wondering how much longer, you know, because... Um, this has gone on for months. You know, the federal government took a few steps. You know, Asu said, you know, that wasn't enough. It initially started with the IPPIS and UTAS conversation. Um, eventually, the federal government decided to let go of that one. You let's go on with, you know, your own continued uh, payment pl platform. And then, of course, then they started talking about revitalization funds, started talking about uh, uh, the uh, earned allowances, you know, outstanding. There's, of course, an argument now. The federal government says, okay, this is what we have. Uh, I should probably said, oh, that, that is enough. They increased the figures. Yeah, to be, to be honest, to, to be honest uh, the, the figures, I know they're important, but what it has been ringing in my head since I found these figures is where are we going? And that's, I hope we'll continue this conversation in the coming days. Data shows that Nigeria lecturers since 1999 uh, have gone on one strike 15 times, spanning 15 months. That means that for every five years since 1999, Nigerian universities spent one year on strike. strike. For President Muhammad Buhari's administration, this tenor, they've been on strike for 12 months and counting. So imagine where we're going to be in the coming yeah. days. You know, we really need point, to do will something. There be an agreement. Well, uh, you know, I, what what you know, credit a lot needs to hit before Asu says, okay, well, I think we can go back to work now. Um, and how, what, what level of assurance would they need from the federal government now that, yes, we have agreed to pay these amounts of money for maybe revitalization, maybe for end allowances, you know, you know, maybe when you get the alert, you know, you can go back to work. At what point would there be that level of trust that ASU would believe and say, let's go back to work? We shall see what happens in the coming days uh, we'll while we encourage students to use this time as productively as they can. Make use of all the uh, um, um, internet access that you can find, the resources there to keep learning um, as the days go by. Hello, hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.